الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A blessed praise And we invoke him to send his peace and blessings upon the best of humanity Sayyidina wa Habibina Rasulillah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As we ask him to do the same for his illustrious family his companions and those who follow them until the end of time. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he says in the Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the believers and manna is something that continually makes you strong. It's a continued source of guidance. It's a continued source of spiritual GPSing, if you will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He notes the incredible nature of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when He says, وَالنَّجَمِ إِذَا هَوَى مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Allah swears by the stars. And the reason that He swears by the stars is as mentioned by Imam Ibn Qayyim is that the stars, the Arabs used them in times of loss, in times of confusion, to redirect them to their path. So the Prophet, as one poet, he said, Anta kashamsun fi dunya. You are like a shams. Another narration said, Anta ka najm. You're like a star. Tuktadubi. That you are used as a form of guidance for people in the darkness of this life. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with something very special. Our love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he said in the hadith of Sayyidina Anas, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ماله ووالده والناس أجمعين. That you will never complete your faith until you love me more than everything you own. Another narration than your father and your children sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the word love is from the same word as the word seed. So a seed has roots, it has fruit. And our love for the Messenger of Allah has to move beyond a simple fashionable statement or simple wording. Al-kalimat bila jawhar, words without meaning or ma'ani. But our love for the Prophet wasallam should be found in loving what he brought. Sallallahu alayhi wa Allah wa huwa al-Qur'an al-Kareem. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equipped him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Qur'an. And we just left the month of Qur'an. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudad nas The month of Qur'an is the month of Ramadan. And just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swore by the Prophet as him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a star in the darkness of this world, when things get hard, when we find ourselves confused. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does the same with the Qur'an. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِعِ النُّجُومِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ فِي كِتَابٍ مَكْنُونٌ لَا يَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَّهَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he swears by the stars. And in Arabic it's very interesting. If you think about the meaning it's فَلَا which means then no. So it's like, I don't swear by the stars. If you were to literally translate it, The same form is found in this sentence. In Surah Al-Balad, like, I do not swear by the stars. And in English slang, we use something like this, where we say, for example, I ain't even got to talk about it. That's the feeling here, that the stars are so obvious and so beautiful and so powerful, I don't have to swear about it. Meaning, I do swear about it, but I don't have to. So Allah says, by the stars. And then he responds and says that the jawab al-qasam is the Qur'an. That by the stars, the Qur'an is a source of guidance. And just as the Prophet wasallam is this star in the darkness of this world, when things are hard and difficult, the Qur'an is also a star which repels doubt and confusion from our lives. But there has to be etiquette with the Qur'an. One of my teachers from Senegal, Sheikh Ahmed Diya, used to say, adab. Every action has its etiquette. Everything that someone partakes has a characteristic that they should acquire. You know, our young brothers in the audience, when you go to play basketball, you don't wear boots. When you go to play basketball, you don't wear leather pants. For our brothers from overseas, when you play soccer, you don't play soccer, I've seen it in Egypt, but usually you don't play soccer in ship ship. Everything has a certain type of etiquette, something that has to be acquired. And the same thing applies to the Qur'an. When we sit with the Qur'an, and we reflect on the Qur'an, and we delve into the Qur'an, there should be certain etiquettes that we have in order to pull out some of the beautiful meanings of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions these in a very distinct way. And He does so by praising the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about the companions, He says, وَجَدَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُولِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Allah says that when Allah is mentioned, وَجَدَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ their hearts, the hearts of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and those who follow them in Iman are moved by the Qur'an. So the first is that the heart is moved, the heart is shaken, the heart is stirred. The second in the Qur'an, Allah takes the Qur'an beyond a simple spiritual experience to that of a physical. Allah says that in Surah Al-Zumar, when they hear the Qur'an, they are brought to chills. It affects them. They are moved to tears. They are moved to a sense of the great spiritual power of the Qur'an. And then thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises their actions. So the Qur'an moves beyond a simple spiritual exercise of sitting in the masjid or staying at home and reciting the Qur'an. That's important. Every letter has 10 blessings. But it moves to an institutional reality through individuals that touches their heart, touches their spiritual experiences and worship, and then the Qur'an is ultimately translated بالأعمال. So when I came back from studying in Dar Ifta, the first fatwa I was ever asked to give, what's the best translation of Qur'an? I said, the best translation of the Qur'an is people, is you. As Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was a walking Qur'an. And we find this mentioned in the end of Surah Al-Qaf. 
three things we can do to really bring a Quranic life, a life that acts on the ayat of Quran. As Dr. Sherman Jackson says that the Muslims are the translation of the Quran in society. We translate the Quran in front of people around us. And I remember there was a brother in New York, his neighbor, he was from Sudan, mashallah. And she had some problems with Muslims and he kept being good to her. You know, we say, if you give people a little fool, it's over. They'll love you forever. So he kept sending her fool and ta'miya and these things in the morning, gharrasa. And one day she asked him, you know, I have insulted you repeatedly. Why do you continue to be so good to me? And he said, if it was up to me, I would hate you. If it was left up to me, I would treat you badly. But there's something above me that has Sultan. And that's the book of Allah. In England, I received an interesting letter from a brother after 7-7 who his neighbor, he said, he lived in a Muslim neighborhood. He said, you know, I, I really have benefited from you being my neighbor, but I don't understand why this violence is happening in the name of your religion. Could you give me a copy of the Quran? So he gave him an English copy of the Quran. And mashallah, this non-Muslim finished the Quran in two weeks in English. He came back to him after two weeks and he said, where's the second book? He said, I don't understand what you mean. He said, no, there has to be version two. He said, no, there's only one. It's just Quran. We don't have like Old Testament or New Testament. Or, we don't have that. We just have Quran. He said, no, 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 there has to be. There has to be a second book. So he said, why? He said, because when I look at the actions of the people in this neighborhood, they're following a different book. They don't follow this book. This book is incredible. And that's why Alama Iqbal, the great Indian poet, he said in one of his poems that when Muslims live the Quran in their lives, when people see them, their fitrah will say to them, So in the end of Surah Taqaf, we find an etiquette mentioned that we should have with the Quran. Allah says, indeed, in this, in this Quran is a reminder. Iman kana lahu qalb. And this is the first step. That when we sit with the Quran, we bring our hearts into it. And that means that we don't have to read a lot. And that's why as parents, we have to be careful that we don't go for quantity over quality with our children. I would much rather have my children read a small portion of Quran and reflect on it and live it than to read a large portion of Quran and unfortunately be tired of it and have a problem with it. But when we sit down, our niyyah is for hidayah. I approach the Quran not so I can argue with the shaykh or argue with the brother in the masjid or argue with my family members or make a point or feel that my group is right. I approach the Quran as though I am an empty vessel because the jasid is only a vessel that holds the ruh. As al-Busti said, Ya khadim al-jasmi qan tashqa li khidmatihi. As he said, one great poem from Afghanistan, he said, how much are you going to labor in serving your body? And he said, turn to your soul and work on that, because that, not your physical prowess, is what makes you human. And the next is to be an attentive listener. To listen carefully, and that's why it's mustahab, to read the Quran out loud, but not too loud. So that the mind and the ears are following the Quran. And the last, wa huwa shaheed. And this is jumla, haliya. For those of you who understand Arabic, it means that I am in a condition of doing so in complete, complete immersion to the book of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and yuhabbib ilayna hadha al-kitab. Kama nasaluhu subhanahu wa ta'ala, yajma'ana ma habibina. كما آمنا به ولم نراه أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله لا أبغي به بدلا حمدا يبلغه مرد ودوانه الأمل ثم الصلاة على خير الورى وعلى ساداتنا آله وصحبه الفضلة the Prophet ﷺ, all of us know numerous prophetic traditions 
that encourage us to be people of the Qur'an. And perhaps the most incredible one is when he said to his illustrious companions, may Allah be pleased with every single one of them, when he said, inna li, inna ahli. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen friends. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became envious and they said to him, Man hum ya Rasulallah, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet وسلم, said, Ahlu Quran, Ahlullah, wa khasatuhu. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people of the Quran are the people of Allah. The Quran, as we mentioned earlier, is not simply here for a spiritual high. It's not here for a fashionable moment. It's here for laying out policy by which we direct our souls to live good lives. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it tilawa. Yet luna kitab Allahi haqqat tilawati. And tilawa means to follow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالشَّمْسِ وَالضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا Allah says, and the moon as it shines in its brightness, and the, the sun as it shines in its brightness, excuse me, and the moon as she follows the sun. So tilawa means to follow. There was one companion of the Prophet who was one of the last companions to die in Bisra, in Iraq. And uh, he was an old man and one day he was celebrating. Somebody came to him and said, why are you happy? He said, khatam to Quran. Today I finished the Quran. He said, subhanAllah, you, you became Muslim on the hands of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You should have finished the Quran many years ago. He said, no, no, no. Khatam tuhu bil af'al. I completed it with my actions. He said, what do you mean? He said, since I became Muslim, I laid out a platform that I would act on every amr in nahi in the Quran. I would act on every law that forbids or encourages to do something in the Quran. And he said, for the last 10 or 15 years, there was one who was never able to do it. In Surah al Nur, where you seek istidhan, you seek permission to come into someone's home and they don't answer the door. He said, every time I went to someone's house, they were home. I never got the aqfarji'u to go back. He said, today, alhamdulillah, I knocked on someone's door. They didn't answer after three knocks and I went home, so I finished the Quran today. So Surah Ghashiyah actually lays out for us, when we look at the Quran, a platform of individual identity and community identity. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ghashiyah, He begins, He inverts it. He talks about the hereafter and then He talks about the dunya. Most people will talk about the dunya first and then we'll talk about the hereafter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hal ataka hadith al ghashiyah. He begins with the akhirah al awlawiyat to remind us that the real life is the life after this world. And after talking about the different types of people in the hereafter, the surah changes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yawthuruna ila li'ibri kayfa khuliqat. Allah says, will they not look at camels, how they're created? And the heavens, how it's raised. And the mountains, how they're firm and strong. And the earth, how it's spread about. I had a teacher from Pakistan. He actually taught me tafsir. He has passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And his explanation of this verse is something absolutely incredible. And it shows us that just what a few verses of the Quran can do if we tie our hearts and our minds to the Quran. It's sad to see converts know everything about Imam Ghazali was this, Ibn Taymiyyah was this, this group is this, this Imam is lost, this Imam is right, but they can't even read Surah Al-Fatiha correctly. One of my teachers used to say, a sign of someone's sincere conversion is that they cling to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet in the beginning. That they know more about the Qur'an and the Sunnah than they know about local politics or local issues or local problems. And that applies to everybody. So Allah says, after talking about the hereafter, look at camels. And I asked the teacher, does it mean Ibn, like a camel? He said, no, this is a metaphor 
for the servant of Allah. Laying out an individual platform for how we should live our life. Because the camel is not a narcissist. They say that the plague of millennials is not the blue blonic plague, it's narcissism. This constant infatuation with me. I mean, think about what you were given. You were given a diet of MySpace, iPad, iTunes, Facebook. It's all about you. Whereas the Quran teaches us to think globally, to be concerned with an infant that was killed in Palestine, with the milk of this baby still in the bottle, and concerned about a man who was brutally shot in Cincinnati. A Muslim feels synergy when he looks at these things and she looks at these things. So being a camel, being someone who, yes, I enjoy this world, but just as the camel needs very little provisions to reach the goal of its master, you and I need very little provisions to reach the goal of our master. That's why Allah says, وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الْمُنْتَحَىٰ The ending is with Allah. And that's why the Prophet said, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ السَّبِيلِ The Prophet said, be in this world like a stranger or a traveler. It doesn't mean we don't enjoy nice things, mashaAllah. But we don't let those nice things own us. <coughs> Nor do we allow them to shape us and weaken us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِلَىٰ السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ Asked the Shaykh, what does it mean? The heavens, he said at an individual level. It means that a Muslim has a high himma, that a Muslim has high goals, that a Muslim shoots for the stars, that Muslims have high ambitions. Nowadays, unfortunately, there is a climate of intimidation within the religious community and even the secular community, quote unquote, within Muslim communities. We have an idea that udamiru nas, I have to destroy people to build them. One of my teachers, I studied riwayat al-Shu'ba with him. And he said, to, he used to give children candy when they would make mistakes. I said, man, you give them candy, I got hit when I made mistakes. He said, candy builds people. It destroys teeth, but it motivates people. It increases their himma for the Quran, the himma for the truth. So in our personal lives and in our religious lives, our expectation should be that of the heavens. Murfu'a, raised. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, the hand on top is better than the hand on bottom. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you ask for Jannah, ask for Fardosul A'la, ask for the highest level of Jannah. The next he said, al Jibari, and look at the mountains, how they're firm. And that implies physical strength and spiritual strength. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the blessings of Talut, he said, زَادَهُ بَسْتَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ We increased him in physical strength and intellect. He had material strength and intellectual strength. Both go hand in hand. That's why Imam Ibn Qayyim said, people are confused to think that to be pious means to be poor or weak. He said, look at Sayyidina Sulaiman. No one was more pious than him in his lifetime, yet no one had more money than he had. He had physical strength and material strength, and that enabled him to be firm in his principles, like a mountain. A mountain is firm, and a believer is firm because the believer is strong. And the last he says, وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ And look at the earth. The Shaykh, he said, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّاهُ فَاتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا because the earth, as the Prophet said, جُعِلَتْ لِلْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدٍ طُهُورًا The whole earth is a playground for the believer. The whole earth is a potential place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca. I can worship Allah in Manhattan. I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quds. I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in DC. Wherever I am, the earth belongs to Allah. الْأَرْضُ لِلَّهِ So that means the believer is not caught up in nationalism. He's not caught up in ethnicity. <coughs> All of those things are constructions. Constructions for the immaterial self, which is the ruh. When we bring those kind of things into play, we actually harm our understanding of Tawheed. That's what one of my teachers said. Someone who truly understands Tawheed cannot be a racist. Someone who truly understands Tawheed cannot be a bigot. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made 
everything around us al asuf al ashai baha permissible insha'Allah to be used. So that means our community is diverse. It's not just imams, it's not just artists, it's not just lawyers, it's not just taxi drivers. All of us have a role to play within the talent that Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. All that, mashallah, from five verses of Quran. We ask Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the book of Allah beloved to us. <coughs> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families from fitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and justice to Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive and protect all of our brothers and sisters in Soma, in Eritrea, in Habasha, and East Africa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, in Kashmir, and all over the Muslim world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our Muslim brothers and sisters in this country, as well as the people of this country, making us a means for the guidance of those who seek guidance. We ask Allah to bless the young brothers and sisters of this masjid. Tonight is Friday night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and keep them strong. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us, to forgive us, to bless our parents and our families, to increase our provisions so that we can obey Him more, and to protect us as we continue this incredible journey to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to bless our new Muslim brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate their entrance into this faith. And may Allah bless their parents and their friends and their families, facilitating Islam for them. We pray for our single parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adib awladakum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be the one who teaches and gives your children that source that's gone. We ask Allah to bless our sisters who hold it down in the streets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen you and keep you strong. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be a means of alleviating many of the challenges that face this country like racism and poverty and other such illnesses. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدِ ثَلَيْتِنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ عِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى استقيم تراسو يرحمني ويحمكم الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر